Welcome to another Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Oh, hoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week is the last week that you can start getting those commendations for the Smuggler's Run, and we are slowly getting to the Fort of the Damned. We're going to be talking about that as well as some private contests going on. All that and more in this week's episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. <laughs> First up on today's docket, let's go over step by step what the weekly dev update gave us this last week. So, of course, G- Joni comes in to talk to us every week to give us the news. And this one was fairly short. Uh, there's a little bit of information that is kind of going to be dealing with the Fort of the Damned update. But other than that, we're all just kind of sitting back waiting for the update to come. Uh, it's definitely apparent when that fifth week is kind of strolled in that the content is uh is definitely getting a little a little slow uh or at least a little tired or worn would it, i guess it would be worn it's getting long in the tooth there we go we'll go with that one but needless to say hopefully you guys all had a chance to go out and get the rest of your time limited commendations done work on getting some gold saved up for the next event and farm up some doubloons for whatever duke has in store for us for the next update. With the beginning of the D- dev update video, the Joe goes in to basically talk about the Fort of the Damned being well received on insiders and that, that we should basically get excited for it. Well, I'm already excited for it, so I can't wait for it. Um, we did get an interesting teaser that came out uh, not too long ago. I believe it was on the 12th uh, or the 13th. And it was just a a quick little like 20 second thing basically showing someone with one of the lanterns with uh, a flame from the Well of Fates. And they were lighting another lantern that was attached to a statue that looks like the ferryman. And this looks like it's actually on the inside of the main part of the fort. Uh, And it looks as though this fort is going to be very heavily stylized in kind of the sea of the damned um uh aesthetic there we go had to find a word so in the background you can kind of see uh there's a giant uh uh, figurehead of the unicorn that we would normally associate with like the pirate legend stuff but it's definitely something that is is all over the the fairy of the damned if you go under the fairy of the damned and you look at the actual uh captain's cabin area you can see the unicorns uh with the crossed horns uh above the the actual door i believe and it looks like the ferryman statues are going to be something that kind of looks like um well we don't really have anything in game that kind of reminds me of that but essentially it's kind of him holding out a lantern uh i'm assuming that it's the lantern uh that he actually used and it looked as though the pirate was lighting different uh, statues, or at least there were different statues. I'm going to just go out and say that there's probably one statue per flame color. And whenever one uh, you light, you'll get the you'll get credit for killing skellies for for or you'll get because I imagine there's got to be something that like commendations were revolving around killing skeletons at this fort under certain lighting conditions uh and and you have to kill a certain number of them that way um it's going to be interesting to find out how the loot for this is uh considering this is kind of a special event and the special event generally they try to reward players a little bit better for doing the events you know obviously you get doubloons and gold from the events but you get the reputation so hopefully being that this is actually a fort uh that the fort loot is a little more uh, a little beefed up something that that would be kind of akin to something out in the devil's roar fort uh the molten fort molten fortress hopefully it's somewhere around that something that really draws people to want to do it um it was definitely very ominous it was really cool to see kind of the the low-lying smoke that is kind of or fog depending on mist i guess mist would be a better way to describe it because it's not really a fog it's it's like an unnatural element but it it looks like it's definitely from the fairy of the damned um the one thing that i did think was interesting that i i am kind of curious about this 
And obviously, we're going to know soon. We're going to know this week. It's it's coming out on the 16th. Get ready for it. We'll probably have um, more info on Wednesday when they actually do the, the dev update uh, video for it and the release trailer and stuff. I'm kind of wondering what their plans are for the weekly um, stream. I, I wonder if they're actually going to push that back a day and actually have that going on the Wednesday uh, or if they'll push it back even further and just make it the, the Thursday so that way they can kind of focus on getting the update up, uh, making sure sure there aren't any major issues, then actually going in uh, once everything's kind of set up and doing the weekly stream to kind of showcase the content. Um, it's going to be kind of cool. I, I like this idea of using an existing mechanic that we have in the game, in this case the fort, but going to try and beef it up so it's a little a little different than just your normal fort um the thing that i'm curious about is if if the regular forts will still be popping up uh because obviously with this being the fort of the damned a lot of people are going to be wanting to do this and if the lantern to the statue is any indication it seems like this is something that will be something that you have to make active um so I'm wondering if this is if, if there's like a skull fort cloud that acts as like an indicator that this fort is active, uh, similar to to regular forts. And if this is something that's just going to cycle along with the different forts uh, or if this is just going to be something that is I, I guess it can't cycle. That would that would be a real bummer if they did something like that. It would have to be something that's constant so that anyone can do it whenever it can't just be something that just pops up once in a while. Um, so yeah, that kind of makes me wonder because uh, we've had problems where, for example, the, the Kraken can't spawn when there's a fort, a fort event going. So if this thing is going all the time just so that people can actually access it, it makes me wonder if the Kraken is going to be active in this event or if it's just going to be too much of a strain on the system. That's, that's kind of an interesting thought I just had. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious if, if the other forts are active and people get their commendations done, at least that'll be nice because people are probably going to be wanting to do this one a lot. And if people are already done and the rewards aren't good enough to, to be able to, to go there and fight for this fort treasure, at least there's multiple forts going at the same time. People could have something else to do other than just regular voyages or hunting down other pirates. It's uh, coming out again on the 16th. There's a slew of other stuff that's coming with this update. Something that I think is really awesome. Uh, they're, they're doing some tweaks with the combat. The next thing that Joe goes into talks about some of the quality of life tweaks that will be coming with this update. Obviously, when we get the full patch notes of what's coming, then we can actually uh, kind of dive in and see more in detail about what's going on with that. But they did want to talk about some of the ones that, that could at least tide me over while I'm waiting for some more info. Uh, I've actually, as far in some of you are, are kind of wondering, well, how come I, I may not know this if, if I'm active on the insiders? I have actually stopped um, reading any of the patch notes. So I have not gone in to read any of the patch notes for the last two or three updates that people have mentioned have happened. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to go into this a little blind so that I can have uh, some, some fun when I actually get in there and not be disappointed by uh, stuff that comes or goes um, as, I've, as I've been told things have. So uh, I've gone in for my hour uh, once or twice the last uh, few weeks just to try and get in that, that time so that I can actually sail around. But most of the time I'm usually sailing around looking for any new changes on I-13 or um, Shipwreck Bay, things like that. Just looking for general Easter egg stuff. Uh, haven't really been messing around too much with the content just so that I don't get too spoiled on it uh, before it actually comes out. Because again, we're gonna be having this update for a full four weeks and I wanna make sure that I'm thirsty for it when it does come out. Some of the quality of life tweaks that did come 
with the video that are coming out on the 16th talks about uh, gun powder barrels and this was kind of funny because I know that Joe got tagged in a tweet gosh this was a while ago where someone had set up a bunch of kegs all around the spire where the sea dog tavern is in adventure mode and they had shot one of the barrels and all of them went up unanimously in this giant blaze of glory. And it looked awesome, but it definitely wasn't the intended outcome. So it looks like that's something that's going to be changing. Uh, so that if you do want to do these kind of layouts with uh, barrels and kind of watch the dominoes explode as they go along an island, uh, it looks like that functionality will be back in the patch uh, what are the better changes to come uh, that they talked about was pets uh, not being so noisy. This was definitely something that I noticed um, when dealing with like Krakens and Megs. As soon as you shoot off a, a powder keg, uh, or not a powder keg, what am I thinking? A cannonball, uh, your pets would start to scream. And that did not end until after the entire engagement. So if you're in a galleon and you've got a few pets and you get attacked by the kraken good luck because that that noise is going to be really really distracting um so it sounds like that's something that they've they've kind of toned down with this update that the the, the pets are going to relax and chill out for a bit and hopefully uh give us a, a little more incentive to have them running around the ship and not being too annoying for the most part the other quality of life that they mentioned dealt with combat and this is interesting because um, there's there's a lot of people that I would say are not happy with the way that the combat works in the game. Uh, as it stands, a lot of people feel like the content isn't quite as fleshed out uh, or fleshed out as, as it could be. That sometimes uh, just having a power lunge and a three combo sword attack is uh, not quite as as interesting as having multiple types of attack or even just multiple types of weapons. I know that a lot of people are hoping for different types of weapons to come down the line as well. Uh, things like boarding axes, things like being able to dual wield swords or pistols, um, things like that, to, to or giving us the opportunity to hold a pistol uh, or a, a, a gun or a gun in one hand and a sword in the other and while you have both out, you still have to swap between the two to be able to use them, which I think I think would actually be pretty cool to kind of have like a gun up uh, at the ready and your sword out, and you're still swinging one-handed with one sword, but also when you switch to your gun, then you just lower your gun and it's at the ready so you can actually aim it. And if you aim it, then you aim it like you normally would. Um, obviously, this would put the, the gun in the left hand, which would mess with, with a majority of players. I think a majority of people are used to seeing guns in the right hand uh, in scoping with your right eye. Um, that's never been an issue being left-handed I, I i can see both doesn't mean i'm good just means i can i can feel comfortable with both sides uh that and playing lots of lots of uh legend of zelda links left-handed so just kind of used to that but um getting back to the the combat tweaks that are coming it sounds like from from the sound of it that they're trying to make it a little more streamlined between running and firing uh, obviously one of the biggest things that they're trying to reduce is the delay between switching from sprinting to either blocking or using ads or aim down sights to with your gun uh, the goal of this obviously being so that when you run away from someone as long as you're still holding down the block or uh, aim ads key uh, that when you come out of that sprint that you are still aiming down the site or you're still blocking with the sword uh, to hopefully make it make sure that you know you don't have to run and then repress the button to aim down or to uh, block that way you can kind of plan out how you plan on on uh, attacking someone or blocking a shot this is actually something that i think is nice they're getting a little more refi refinement into the combat so that it's it's a little more anticipated for what the outcome is going to be when you're actually running around <laughs>
All right, so hopefully you took a break, you got a drink, or you sipped on something I did. So I wanted to talk about a new accessibility option that Joe talked about in the update video that talks about reduce to hold. Uh, and this is designed to reduce the amount of time it takes to, to in, or when, when you're actually having to hold something. So say like, uh, say you're blocking and you are, or, or you're trying to aim down the sight with your gun and your finger's getting tired because you've been holding the trigger button or you've been holding the mouse button for so long that you, you just, it's it kind of, or maybe even, maybe you're like me and you've had a couple bad buttons on mice before. Uh, is it mice or is it mouses? What's what's the plural for computer mice? I guess it would be mice. I want to say mice. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a big. It's I know it's a big debate. Mouses or mice. Anyway, a uh, weird tangent. But say like you have a faulty button or a button that doesn't register as well as it should. Um, thankfully, with the with the uh, with the Xbox controller, I think they're analog, so you've got some give on that as far as I understand it. I could be wrong about that too. If, if I am, feel free to correct me. Uh, but anyway, getting back to the accessibility option, the reduce to hold. So now it actually becomes a toggle. So if you want to, instead of holding down the button to aim down the side of a gun, you can turn that into a toggle. So you can toggle it so that you're aiming it down all the time, or you can toggle it to get out of that. I don't see that as something that I'm going to really look at doing, but then again, I didn't think that I was going to be using the reduce to interact that much, and I use that almost all the time, because uh, holding down the button to try and repair a hole in the hull with a plank is really time consuming, so it's a lot better for me just to hit the button once and it actually does it. Uh, same thing with running by treasure and hitting the, the key to pick it up or to interact with it. Uh, it's a lot easier just to run, hit that key, and then keep moving, and then the server latency picks it up. Even though I've already run past it, uh, it still registers that I picked it up. So that's, it, it's gonna be interesting to see if this is something that actually catches on with the community as well, similar to the reduce to interact key. Um, I like this because obviously it's giving more accessibility to more people. Uh, Rare has been great at doing this. And if I recall, I remember hearing something, I can't remember where I heard it, but I think I remember hearing them talk about in introducing more ways to improve the, uh, the, the color uh, blindness issues that come with Sea of Thieves. Obviously, in lieu of a Fort of the Damned, a lot of blind uh, color blindness is going to affect how good uh, of, a, of a play session you're going to have if you're colorblind. If you can't tell the difference between red and pink or blue or purple, I don't necessarily know how bad that's going to be for people. I know that we actually have a fairly big community of pirates who actually are colorblind uh, and do have trouble with uh, like X marks the spots, being able to differentiate those between the actual like green maps uh, foliage on, on big islands. So I'm interested to see uh, how they will address this as well. And if this is another option that will help kind of give people an idea of what color to they're they're actually working with when they get these uh, based on these color options. So I, I know that other games are, are pretty good. I've seen a lot of options in things like World of Warcraft uh, to be able to help combat color blindness uh, as well as like Heroes of the Storm and stuff so that it makes it easier for people to differentiate the, the normal colors uh, that most people don't have problems with and in all, all honesty, most of the times when I look at the colorblind options, they're actually a little more higher in contrast uh, and a little more clear as far as, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So I don't know. I, I've never had problems with color, um, except that whenever I look at something with someone else and they say it looks like one color and I say it looks like something else, and I just think that they're silly for saying it's the wrong color. But who knows? Maybe I, maybe I just haven't had that test. Um, I'm trying to think. If there was something else that was coming along with the Fort of the Damned, it seems like they're really excited about it. It seems like they're they're looking forward to, to this update. I'm looking forward to it just based on some of the stuff that people have been saying and some of the people that have been on the insider forums and stuff. It, it, it seems like this is going to be a great 
a great lead into the rest of the year uh, with with more content coming in the future with uh, things like Tall Tales and lore and comics and such. Um, but let's move on. Alongside all of that, one of the things that's been requested for quite a while uh, is a wider range of kind of feminine clothing. So there's going to be quite a nice range of, um, of new feminine clothing coming with uh, this update. Obviously, everybody can um, equip that, but it's very much targeted um, from a kind of feminine perspective. Elizabeth, how's it coming? It's difficult to say. I'm told it's the latest fashion in London. Well, women in London must have learnt not to breathe. <sighs> That's right. So we're getting some new clothing in for females uh, and obviously for males or just whoever wants to wear in general. But I'm glad to hear this because this is something that has been a request from mostly female pirates for the better half of a year now. Uh, the first instances I remember of this being expressed specifically to the devs was on the very first weekly dev update where they actually met Xbox Jackie. Now, a lot of you who are new to the game probably don't know who Xbox Jackie is, but back in the early days when Sea of Thieves was still getting its footing in the uh, streaming aspect of their community content and reaching out with the community, they went out sailing and they came across a pirate whose name was Xbox Jackie. And she was wonderful. She was great. Uh, she coined the, well, maybe not coined, but she made popular the phrase of uh, powder kegs being referred to as boom boxes. And if you go to Golden Sands Outpost, behind the blacksmith um, blacksmithing shop, there's actually an Easter egg for Xbox Jackie with a bunch of broken powder kegs there. Uh, it's kind of nice that it's obviously it's taken a long time and they've been putting a lot of work into stuff that they had in motion well in advance before this request obviously when this happened this was uh i believe in gosh was it i want to say it was late september um but I know that when they started doing the, the weekly dev updates, they had already started working on content for Shrouded Spoils and the arena. And uh, they were starting to work on pushing out the Tall Tales stuff till later on. Now that it's a year later, it's nice that we're finally getting in some new clothing in for females. Uh, I imagine there are to be a lot of corsets uh, as well as um, better, better looking pants. Hopefully some really nice designs. Uh, if you look at the comics, the comics actually have some great designs for the female characters in there. And a surprisingly large amount of them tend to wear clothes that are still very not well i don't know how comfortable they would be but they're definitely a lot more functional than say like a dress uh that was designed in london uh that has like a whole bunch of straps that that have to kind of cinch you in uh so you can't breathe but um it's it's nice i i can't wait to see just how many uh large male pirates are going to be running around with these uh with these dresses uh or, or women's clothing I, I know a lot of them love running around with the uh the ones that have the straps kind of off shoulder uh they love love having big old beards running around on pirate ships uh, uh wearing dresses so i'm sure um rupaul would be very happy with all of these decisions and i'm hoping that the female gamer base for Sea of Thieves is happy with the selection that's made available to them. Uh, one of the other changes that came in, which for some reason really boggled Joe, uh, he didn't seem to really see the, the reasoning for this. And I, when, when playing with other, uh, with playing with female pirates, a lot of them uh, don't typically wear shirts because they just like the bandages uh, that go across their chest. And those are something that are not technically any kind of part of clothing. Those are just the, on the base model of the actual females. So you can't take those off. You can't uh, put it, you can put stuff over it, but you can't change the colors of them. And this is now actually giving us an opportunity to change those colors, similar to the way that we are probably going to be uh, dyeing our hair. And that's a nice change. I think that they need to take that. Um, this Here's the crazy thing. 
I I love that they're being or that they're giving us the opportunity to change the color of our our underwear, and the fact that this alters uh, the underwear and not the actual pirate is kind of crazy because the hair is technically a separate piece of your pirate, but the cloth the, the underwear, as far as I've understood it, has all been part of the same model since the model itself is uh, modeled out with the clothing still on there. So the fact that they're able to actually isolate the underwear and uh, change it makes me wonder if they went back and actually changed the full model for the actual pirates or if that's something that they just they were they found a way to kind of get that shader isolate that shader and then add a variable function to change it to whatever color it needs to be uh, based on the one that the pirate selects and if that's the case then why why can't we add a die system to the game for all of the clothing uh, and all of the clothing just has these die sets made available because right now the way that they're doing this is by releasing different color sets through Duke the Dark Lord's black market uh, and, and to be perfectly honest I don't want to have like seven variants of the same jacket with different colors I just want one jacket and a die set that allows me to change that that color of that jacket. It seems like such a, a weird take in my mind as to why why Rare is deciding to release recolors of current sets of clothing for people that want different coloring. And the the biggest bummer is is say like um, we'll take the we'll take the build rat uh or the castaway build rat set for example uh let's just say people don't like that color but they love the design of it because it makes their pirate look really grungy and rare comes out and releases a new variant of that available through duke the dark lord's uh um shop and the color that they come out with is another color that a faction of the population for sea of thieves just absolutely hates and they still want to wear the castaway the bilge rat castaway stuff but they they don't want to wear either of those color sets wouldn't it be a little more work but obviously uh, a better system in place so that when you're designing clothes you design it with the idea that there are going to be different palettes of colors that you can choose from for that clothing and vary up the actual clothing as opposed to redistributing the entire set for one color once a month uh, and that way it's i i mean i part of me understands that part of this is to kind of get gold out of the economy so that people don't have millions and millions of gold but again this kind of falls back on are people actually going to buy it because they're collectors or are they going to buy it because they actually like the colors uh and that still falls flat as as an argument in my mind um obviously it's not that's not something that the devs would probably want to hear but just being honest I would much rather that they take a system more like how they're going to be implementing with the underwear being able to change colors and apply that to all clothing so that if you want the pirate legend outfit but you want that thing just blacked out just pure black just gold with just pure black that it allows you to do that and i'd much rather they take more time working on that than the amount of time that it's currently taking to implement current sets of clothing with one color variant once a month and I, I mean does that make sense it's kind of it kind of goes back to the idea behind uh why i think they need to introduce a radial system for the shanties so when you're playing a song you pull out your instrument it gives you an option just like with fishing pole and bait to be able to choose the different song that that you want and each of those songs is labeled and you go into the equipment chest and it has its own little thing and you can select the six out of how you know 15 different shanties that they have so that way you have the six that you want to listen to other people have the six that they want to listen to and it works like the emote system where you can kind of uh swap in and out shanties that you're not necessarily 
necessarily listening to. Like I have these systems that I think would be so much more well received by the community than the systems that they're currently putting in place. And I would love to understand kind of the the um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. I'm trying to understand the the process or or the reasonings behind why the systems that I'm suggesting, while probably more intensive and take more time to actually implement, uh, wouldn't be a more fulfilling system f in in the future. Just because there's you know just because it's something that um, j I don't know I don't know I'm crazy I'm babbling on about this and. You guys are probably done hearing about this, but, but but basically, I'm trying to understand why we have things like the the castaway uh, co cosmetics, and how come there's like three different variant colors of it instead of just having one set with color dyes that allow us to change the colors of that, similar to the way that they're implementing underwear. Uh, on a more positive note. I'm sure that this is going to be really well received by a lot of players who are going to go in and actually be able to change the the bandages on their female pirate to whatever the color they want. I really think they need to introduce more colors. And while we're at it, Rare, how come we don't have the rest of the cosmetics for the standard um, hull, uh, the, for, for the standard liveries that we have had for a while? We've, we're still... Still sitting on the same same three sets of the original hulls for the cannon capstan and wheels, uh, but the other ones are not around. And uh, where are the cheap hulls that um, have the base colors, similar to the blue, the yellow, the green, and the black sails, all available for seven thousand gold? Where are the where are the uh, the coinciding hulls for that? Um, Sorry, I'm I'm getting kind of ranty, aren't I? I'm sorry about that. I, I'm ho hopefully I'm not being a big drag, but I was just thinking about how this is the fifth week. Um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in Sea of Thieves because I just haven't had any desire to do anything in the game because everyone that's out there uh, is is either not running around with treasure or there's no accommodations to really work work towards that um, other people are wanting to do and i'm kind of looking forward to when we actually get some more new content something new to strive towards and work on uh, again i'm kind of go back to the beginning of this this segment i'm really happy that we're getting some new clothes in for females i'm really happy that they're adding some systems in place to be able to change color for clothing i just hope that they expand that a lot uh, just take that and, and spread it across all of the sets. Just let us play around with the colors for all of the different sets. Liveries, for clothing, for equipment, all that jazz. Just let's let's cut out some of the, the, the repetitiveness for the same looking item, just a different shade. All right, pirates. Next up on today's docket, let's talk about Sea of Champions, the last item that I think was on the weekly dev update video where Joe goes in to talk about some of the community driven events that are coming out into the world uh, that kind of show off some of the, the, the community creators out there just kind of building up their own contests to help showcase the, the content creators or the, the gamers out there in, in an effort to try and kind of build them up as well as this game as a potential esports. So if you guys heard on there what Sea Champions is doing, they didn't really dive too much into it. So I wanted to take a moment to kind of give uh, the Sea of Champions a bit of a, a bit of a bump in, in kind of acknowledgement. Uh, the Sea of Champions is an organized arena team tournament. Um, they're doing their first actual competitive Sea of Thieves of experience on October 19th. That's at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and they've already picked up the contestants. They've already picked up the uh, casters and the hosts for this. Um, I didn't look into this enough to put in my hat for the, the actual uh, commentary and stuff, but that's something that I'm actually going to see if I can kind of look into and see if I have time uh, to be able to jump into this. I'd love to be able to, to work with them on getting into the whole shout casting thing uh, just because I love this, love actually seeing this game and I love seeing people go head to head with this kind of stuff. But one of the interesting things that came out about this was that the five teams of participants that have been selected are going to be battling 
for a spot in the Hall of Fame for the Sea of Champions, as well as earning a thousand dollars as a crew uh, for their actual for the actual championship. Uh, the kind of cool thing about this is that it's not just a, a one-time arena adventure. Uh, as far as I understand, this is going to be taking place over the course of five different rounds. Uh, so what is that? That's about an hour and a half. Yeah, that's about an hour and a half's worth of time. So not a whole lot of time to actually do this. So if you're if you're gonna go check that out, check it out, they have um, they have a, a Twitch, they have a Twitter, they have a, a mixer, and they have a Discord all set up for this. So if you've got a crew of four and you want to participate in this, uh, there's definitely ways that you can apply so that you're getting into the second. Uh, tournament for this the qualifier matches uh, for that I believe are going to take place on November 9th and 10th so if you want to get in on the second event uh, there's a fill um, a form at the bottom of the website that they have that I'm going to have in the show notes uh, it's just see if see a champions.com you can go there right now you can take a look at the the bit of information that they have obviously with this uh, event they they want to kind of make sure that you understand that the code of conduct is in place uh, because this is something that is not sponsored by rare but is definitely being helped out by rare they're going to have their own private uh, arena mode for this and this kind of goes to what joe was talking about with the private uh, servers for Sea of Thieves. Um, this is kind of the first step for this. Uh, obviously, with uh, the Dread Pirate Doug and the the um, Race of Legends, things like this are events that are tough to actually get ships on a server for. And it's even more tough to try and get the supplies ready for this. Uh, I was watching some Sea of Champions um, kind of workout or, or like a uh, who it was fox die was working with his team and they were just kind of testing some stuff and they were trying to do some prep work for the event and one of the problems was is that two ships started and they were going to um they were actually going to try and race each other the trouble was is that one of them was actually hit by a kraken and they had to reset the entire event well pfft First, they have to take care of the Kraken. Then they have to go and try and actually get the, the cursed cannonballs and the cannonballs and the food and the planks so they could restart the event. Having Rare actually use private servers, something that they've done for things like Battle for LA or Battle for Florida uh, at, at um, Guardian Con and stuff like that, giving them those tools is a great way for us to start working on building up the arena to be something more than just another mode for people that want to be super aggressive uh, with pvp in the game actually giving us uh, ways to kind of experience the game at its at its best uh, when you have good crews going up against each other i'm i'm really happy to see this i'm i'm following around with it a lot more lately and I'm going to be trying to see if I can get into the whole shout casting thing with them because I, I love the idea and I've got the knowledge to be able to jump in there and talk with other people uh, for, for long periods of time about what's going on in the game. That's, that's pretty easy for me. So I, I'm going to see if that works out. Um, but yeah, again, Sea of Champions, uh, October 19th. That's at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that would be 8 p.m. BST. Uh, that would be what was that 8 a.m uh i think 8 a.m yeah 8 a.m uh pacific standard time man trying to remember three different time zones all, all the time is uh is is rough at times but yeah it's it's a great thing to see the community coming together and doing this um obviously this is something that's come up pretty recently the the twitch or the twitter account's actually been in existence since april of 2015 so i don't think this was something that was being planned on for a long time but it's nice to see that someone's really taken the head or taken taking the reins on this and looking to do their own content uh for sea of thieves as opposed to waiting for rare to do their own next kind of battle for la style thing uh they've got someone working on some uh great great 3d graphics it's it's hilarious and adorable to see the sea of champions uh stuff and i'm i'm really happy that this is starting to work on work out itself in the future uh this is this is what we need this is exactly what we need for the community we need more events uh 
kind of spearheaded by the community to actually make sure that um, that this stays in the limelight between adventure modes uh, or adventure updates, I should say. Next up on today's docket, I did want to bring up something that uh, was shown off in the Reddit for Sea of Thieves. You've probably seen this if you go around the Sea of Thieves Reddit, but uh, artwork by Shoot There for X EXP or XP uh, on Reddit posted a really awesome kind of silhouette design of some of the different things that could come with Sea of Thieves in the future regarding ship design, not necessarily cosmetics, but kind of a customization for the ship now if you've been listening to this podcast for a while you know that i've i've been pretty bored with the actual silhouette of the ships uh i think that there's some great designs like the skelly sloops and skelly galleons that i think would do well if they were given to actual uh communities uh or, or, or players i should say and uh shoot there for xp posted a really great design of four different ship types that could come out and it's tough to describe over audio, but the general idea is that with each of the ship designs, you're going to have a more elaborate kind of looking things for like the aft castle uh, or, or the, the stern of like a sloop. So uh, say, for example, the top deck would have a higher railing uh, or more elaborate railing. And the, the actual front of the ship, the bowsprit, would be significantly different. Whereas, like say, like the ferryman's is a lot higher, uh, so it's a little bit uh, taller up. And the, the actual ropes that connect up to the sails have little, uh, little accents on them. And the, the back of the lantern, so uh, the actual um, stern of the ship, there's just that canopy. This would actually have like a built up deck with a roof with a little lantern that hangs off the back, very similar to standard uh, ship designs um, for, for when you're actually sailing at, at night. And I love this idea. It's, it's a small thing and it does kind of change up how you can kind of like it's a lot easier to kind of shoot people uh, when it's on the back of a sloop because they don't really have anything to, to hide behind. Uh, and with these, you definitely have a bit of a railing, something that you could kind of hide behind. Um, but it would it would reward people who have been in the game and have the different uh, styles of, of or, or at least the reputation to be able to afford these. Or even adding this is something so that people that are say level 50 for some of the different trade companies could work on getting some elaborate chest queen or uh, chest queen what is that even uh, quest chain so that you could actually unlock these specifically stylized uh, trade company ship types so it alters the actual design of the sloop as opposed to just slapping on some new colors and some pretty sails with a really nice figurehead. Uh, it's it's something that I would love to see if Rare is open to, uh, especially based on some of the designs that they had in the art book. They they had a lot of really cool ideas on how you could have some different ship types out in the world. Uh, unfortunately, since the game's been launched, they've been focused on delivering more content and lore as well as a new mode and have not really touched on too much outside of the standard customizations. Now, bear in mind, a lot of the cosmetics that have come out have either been free or have been uh, been able to be acquired through working on commendations. So it's not like, you know, the, the stuff we have hasn't been, uh, hasn't been bad, uh, or excuse me, hasn't been good. It has been good. It's just not something that I think really, <sighs> I, I remember the days when we actually had the Order of Souls, the Rogue Sea Dog set. And pirates that had the Rogue Sea Dog set had been out there killing skeleton forts. And that's how they were able to get all of the reputation. So when you saw them, you knew they must have been pretty battle hardened because they had to fight off enough people to get skull forts, which only occurred once every three hours. So the people that had that had the were the people that had been killing skeletons and killing pirates for quite a while and managed to succeed well enough to get those liveries and eventually you started seeing the pirate legend stuff and when you saw the pirate legend stuff you knew that that crew had actually been really really good at at kind of grinding and spending time 
because a lot of the time, if you were just kind of working on regular missions the way we do, uh, or the way more other pirates were normally just doing and not working on skull forts, uh, then generally you would barely get halfway before some of the new pirate legends. Now, obviously, a lot of people grinded that stuff out pretty quickly uh, and didn't necessarily have to be very good at PvP to do it. They just knew how to play the system. And that's kind of fine as well, too. But I would love to see a little more elaborate uh, designs for the actual ships instead of just the colors of the ships, if that makes sense. Uh, I want to see more accents, uh, more build ups around like the canopies and decks of the ships so that they they vary from how every ship looks. You know, having shipwrights in back in the day used to pride themselves on their craftsmanship and design. Uh, a lot of iteration happened over a quick period of time to ships uh, to try and see like how could you make them sail faster uh, but still have enough protection from cannon shots some of them were, were designed purely just for combat and they were you know three decks uh, deep in cannons um, things like that and with Sea of Thieves we don't really have too much growth in that aspect and I think that that's something that I would love to see a little more focus in in the future as we start playing around with the ideas of venturing into different worlds as far as the fairy or the sea of the damned um a lot of of hinting around the sea of five winds con uh content that was in the in the um in the art book uh a lot of like shifty eyes on twitter a lot of people hinting that that stuff's coming uh, we don't know necessarily when they're going to be introducing the five wins stuff. Uh, and if you don't have the art book, the stuff that I'm referring to is actually uh, a heavily dragon slash Asian influence uh, for the for Sea of Thieves cosmetics. Um, it's it's a, like a whole style of pirate that's introduced to kind of represent the the South uh, Asia style of, of pirates that were out there at that time. And uh, the closest thing I can recommend you checking it out to if you don't have the book is the third Pirates of the Caribbean uh, movie, uh, similar to the way that they had those kind of fan sails uh, that were kind of, um, they look like wings, uh, like bat wings or dragon wings, things like that. I love it. It looks awesome. I'm really hoping that that kind of stuff comes in and kudos to uh, uh, Shoot There for XP on Reddit for taking the time to kind of build out these designs and share them with the community. I think it's, I think it's really cool. Uh, I, I love it. All right, pirates, that's going to do it for this episode of Keel Halt. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit shorter than last week, so the weeks prior, because obviously we just don't have a whole lot going on. We're waiting for that last update. And until the 16th, we're going to be waiting around with bated breath to see what actually makes it into the build and get our chance to actually go take down some of those Fort of the Dams. As always, I look forward to your content and finding out what you like and dislike about this update. And next week, I imagine I will be able to dive in full headfirst into all of the news, all of the content, diving into the patch notes, as well as trying to come up with some good hints or strategies for you to be able to help take down some of these Fort of the Damned events. And with that, Pirates, it's time to head out. So if you want to get a hold of me, if you have some stories to share, I don't have any stories to share this week, unfortunately, and I didn't get any new reviews on iTunes to read out to you. So if you want to get a hold of me, there's always ways to do it. The contact info is in the show notes. But if you want to hit me up, you can always reach me at C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com or C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N at Twitter. Uh, you can always reach me on twitch at twitch.tv slash c-a-p-t underscore l-o-g-u-n uh, for those of you listening to spotify thank you so much i really appreciate it for anyone listening to youtube thank you so much i appreciate it if you want to like subscribe and hit the bell as all of the things that they always tell you to do i uh, definitely appreciate it and i'm trying to think if there's anything else pirates i think that's going to do it so as always thank you so much pirates i love you and I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves.